Hi everyone, this is Deb Tim. Welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. So today we are going to have a look at my brackish aquarium. I have six green spotted puffers that are brackish fish. So I have set up a brackish aquarium and I want to share that process with you. So please stay tuned. This is my 40 gallon breeder, home to my six green spotted puffer fish. Green spotted puffers are brackish. So yes, this is a brackish aquarium. What exactly is brackish water? Brackish water is simply water containing more saline than fresh water, yet less than full marine water. Naturally, brackish water is found where inland fresh water meets seawater. This part of the water system is called an estuary, where fresh water meets salt water, creating brackish conditions. To create your first brackish water aquarium, you will need a list of items, much the same as setting up any aquarium. First thing you will need to consider is what size of aquarium you want and of course what species of brackish fish you would like to keep. Just a little FYI, it's highly unlikely you will find fish sold from brackish water. In fact, some people working in this field have no idea what a brackish fish is. Because brackish fish are born in fresh water, it's not harmful for them to be sold from fresh water while they are young. But it's important to introduce them to brackish water when you set up their new home. Brackish fish will return to the same spawning grounds where they were born, following the estuary inland to fresh water where they have their babies. They will then return to the brackish or even marine water, only returning to fresh water during spawning. Filtration can be a canister or HOB filter. You want your water to be cycled through the filter at least 10 times per hour. So for a 30 gallon aquarium, you would need a 300 GPH filter. GPH simply means gallons per hour. So this is another brackish tank that I had a while ago. So I just wanted to show you another species of brackish fish. These are Colombian sharks. So the next thing you will need is a heater. The rule of thumb for wattage is five watts per gallon. On the package, it should state the size of aquarium the heater is recommended for. Also make sure the heater you purchase is fine for fresh and salt water. Next, you will want to purchase a light and lid as well. You will find brackish water evaporates much quicker than fresh water. A thermometer and hydrometer are next on the list. You can get a hydrometer that has a thermometer on one end and the hydrometer on the other. They are great for quick checks, but they're also delicate so they can break easy. I myself prefer checking my salinity with a refractor meter. The substrate of choice is up to you. You can use any sand as long as it's clean. You do not have to buy cichlid sand or marine sand or any sand that is specifically labeled for fish use. You can, but you'll pay so much more for it. It's not necessary. Pool filter sand is my preference. In fact, I have pool filter sand in all of my aquariums. Inexpensive and works just as well. Now, decor is totally up to you. It's wise to do a little research on the fish you want to keep so that you can imitate their preferred scape, making them feel right at home. Next, you will need marine salt. You do not want freshwater aquarium salt. It must be marine salt. I use instant ocean, but there are a host of other choices available. A good water conditioner is next. 
Just make sure it's safe for salt as well as fresh. It's wise to purchase your fish as juveniles. The little rascals are already double in size from how tiny they were when I first got them. These little Colombian sharks were also purchased very small. They've actually grown quite a bit already. But this is not a great fish to purchase because they will get big. I kept these guys until they reached about eight inches each and then I rehomed them. Once your aquarium decor is all set up, you can begin to fill your aquarium with water. You will want to start with two tablespoons of marine salt per gallon of water. At that ratio, your gravity, which is the density, should reach at 1.005 to 1.010. Now this aquarium is at 1.010. Salinity refers to the actual weight of the salt. Keep in mind, you should add the salt by dissolving it in large buckets and then adding it to your aquarium. My little rascals here will one day be full marine fish. So in order to provide their gradual introduction to full salt water, in order to bring your brackish water up to full salt water, you need to do this gradually. So every six months, I increase the salt dose by one tablespoon, continuing upping the salt dosage by one tablespoon per gallon until I've reached seven tablespoons of marine salt per gallon. At this point, your gravity should read 1.020 to 1.025. This is a slow process and should not be rushed. Just a reminder, you are only replacing the salt corresponding to the amount of water you have removed. Water does expand and contract with changing temperatures, so your gravity will also fluctuate with rising and falling temperatures. The higher the temperature, the higher your gravity will read. One of the best things about brackish fish is that they are generally quite hardy and not as sensitive to water parameter fluctuations. With this aquarium being still fairly new, I have not increased the salt content yet. The little rascals will eventually be full marine fish. So at the six month mark, I will be increasing the salt dosage. I'm excited to watch these guys grow, eventually reaching a full size of six inches. So until next time, this is Deb Tim signing out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you had a great weekend. I wish you a wonderful week ahead and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.